powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Wednesday. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Riesinger. An update tonight coming from Coal Strip on the cleanup of the power plants and the toxic waste left behind. The Department of Environmental Quality held a public meeting at the Coal Strip City Hall concerning remediation of the coal ash ponds. Q2's David J was there and has this report. The DEQ talked about the three parts of the cleanup, the entire plant site, one and two and three and four, while Talon Energy focus mainly on the entire cleanup of the plant site. Capture wells are vertical wells and they only have a certain zone of, you know, of capture. Uh, what we found through our monitoring data and modeling is we know where most of the impacts are and so we can target a horizontal well to really focus in on that impacted area and clean it up a lot faster. And then from a freshwater injection standpoint, um, Alternative 4 is looking at 54 freshwater injection wells. Some of the questions from the public centered around the environment, fly ash, and some of the financial concerns. And one man even said he was encouraged by what he heard from Talon Energy and the DEQ. In Coal Strip, David J. for MTN News. Well, reports on possible cleanup plans will be available by the end of the month. The public will have a chance for input in the fall. Well, more than two dozen states and cities are challenging the Trump administration's decision to roll back restrictions on coal burning power plants. In a lawsuit filed Tuesday, they argue the president's new plan endangers the environment. President Trump, who campaigned on bringing back coal jobs, has been working to replace the Obama-era clean power plan, which set limits on carbon pollution at existing power plants. Now, critics worry about the cost to public health and the environment. Montana is not among those filing the lawsuit. All right, let's turn to the weather now. Bob, we had some storms moving across parts of the viewing area tonight. How's it looking out there now? Yeah, things are starting to quiet down in south-central Montana, but still up in the northeast corner of the state. It's still a little bumpy out there. Let me show you. Let's go right to it right now. You can see the Doppler radar. Uh, right where the jet stream is across southern Montana, that's where we had most of the storms tonight. Some really big ones in Powder River and Carter County tonight. Let's zoom down there now and you can see some of these storms, they were really pretty huge. They had uh, half dollar size hail in some of these storms. Now they continue to push out of the area. They are no longer a threat. Meanwhile, up there by Culbertson, uh, in that area, we do have in parts of Roosevelt County a uh, severe thunderstorm warning until 1045 tonight. They have reports of 60 mile per hour winds and penny size hail. You can see the storm moving into that area. Meanwhile, you can see elsewhere in the southeastern corner of the state tonight. These were some of the hail sizes we had. One and a half inches at Hamnett, uh, one and a quarter inch over at the Broadus, and one inch over at Volberg. It's been a bumpy night tonight. We'll have more coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, tonight, a witness recounts the moments after falling rocks killed a teenage girl on going to the Sun Road this week. Pat Cummings says she was driving down the famous road in Glacier National Park Monday when traffic stopped amid sounds of horror. Park officials confirm a car driven by a family of five from Utah was caught in a massive rock fall. The stones, some a foot in diameter, came crashing through the rear window. I could clearly hear a woman crying frantically, screaming, um, you know, please help her, someone please just help her. If there had been more cars probably closer together, I do think it could have been worse. Now, since the victim was just 14 years old, the Flathead County Sheriff's Office does not plan to release her name. Well, the man who forced a standoff with police on Billings West End last night is now charged with two felonies. 25-year-old Anthony Cross is charged with attempted assault with a weapon and criminal endangerment after police say he tried to seriously injure his mother. He allegedly pointed a shotgun at her head and wouldn't let her or another relative leave the apartment. Court documents also state Cross was heavily intoxicated and armed when he engaged in last night's standoff with Billings Police. Well, tonight, six police officers have been shot in an ongoing standoff in North Philadelphia. That violence erupting this afternoon during a narcotics call to a house. Police have been trying to negotiate with the shooter for hours, urging him to surrender. Two police officers and three hostages were all rescued by a SWAT team. But the suspect remains armed and inside the house tonight. All six of those officers have since been released from the local hospitals. Well, today the Dow experienced its largest percentage plunge this year and its fourth largest point drop ever. U.S. stocks fell today as investors sold stock in companies and moved it into bonds. As fear of a recession rises, the Dow fell as many as 808 points and was 3% lower at close. The broader S&P 500 closed down 2.9% and the Nasdaq sank 3%. 
Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, Sunday's hail put dents in cars, homes, fences, and pocketbooks. We'll check out the impact on farmers. Plus, 60 years ago, Montana's landscape changed forever. Tonight, we're going to talk with people who were there. And in sports, young Mustangs are playing great baseball. Scott shows us if they're now all alone in the Pioneer League lead. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.